So this guitar is crazy, and I do not say that lightly. Usually I'm a complete Les Paul single cut guy, but I haven't been this excited about a Super Strat in, well, ever. This is the Charvel Sean Long Pro Mod Sandima Style 1. Been super stoked to try this one out. Let me tell you why. Let's take a closer look. Now, when I posted this guitar to Instagram and Facebook, a few of you commented it was looking suspiciously like the signature guitar of a certain adult website. And I mean, it's close, I guess. You guys need to get your heads out of the gutter. Come on now. Now, while this is not the Horn Pub signature, this is Sean Long of While She Sleeps signature Charvel. A Pro Mod San Dimas Style 1 HHHT if you want to get overly specific about it. Essentially, that's Charvel for a traditional strap body, double humbucker, hardtail, no pickguard. Body is made of alder, bolt-on satin maple neck with graphite reinforcement, maple fingerboard 22 jumbo frets, lumen lays, Charvel locking tuners, Graftech nut, and EMG humbuckers, a 66 in the neck, and an exclusive bright yellow 57 in the bridge. So good specs and simple enough that my caveman brain doesn't get weighed down with option paralysis. Generally the way I like to test guitars is by using them to write something. Super excited to see what riffs this guitar inspires. Let's do it. Okay so I hit up Sean Long on Instagram. He says he's down to collaborate on the track as long as he likes it. While She Sleeps is one of my favorite modern metalcore bands so that would be sick. You know that would mean a lot so hopefully write something that he enjoys. To try to make it simple, the vibe I'm going for is like wish.com while she sleeps. I've got the guitar in drop C. <laughs> Sounds pretty chunky to me. Man, just look at this guitar, it's so fucking cool. Basically, hardtail strat, EMGs, simple, metal. I love this. You see it mostly with ebony boards where there's no inlays. Generally not so much with maple, but with a light fingerboard matched with a black body. It looks so clean. Man, and again, this is a theme this year with Fender Mexico. These fingerboard edges, super nice. They're really round and I noticed this with the EVH as well. It's not just like they've taken material off in between the frets. That's something you see on a lot of Indonesian models. The frets are flush with the rounded fingerboard edges. So the playing experience is just super smooth. Also love the yellow accents, the EMG, the logo. I don't know how it looks on the camera. The logo might be a bit difficult to see in bright light, but with a black light or even the blue LEDs that I have back here, it lights up and it looks very, very cool. Anyways, I'm just talking a lot. Let's write a demo track. I've noticed While She Sleeps likes this really, I don't know how to describe this picking pattern, but it's like, like going on these mini runs during the riff and the emphasis on notes kind of switches between on beat and off beat. Yeah, that can work. I've just realized that that may be a bastardized version of antisocial, but it sounds good, so we move. There's something here, I'm gonna find it. Found it, all together now. Cool. They also use a healthy amount of the Digitech Whammy pedal, and if you've never tried one, you need to. It's the greatest pedal in the world. Basically, it lets you just jump around octaves, like that. So, I guess we can use it for the intro. That's absolutely ridiculous. So that'll be playing first, and then we can come on with that. Perfect. Intro sorted. Cool, I like that. Not really sure where to go with that riff. Nah, we'll come back later to it. I gotta say, I'm really liking this neck. It's kind of familiar to a regular Strat, but it's thinner without having a super flat back like an Ibanez. Like a lot of us, Sean Long started with the Squire Stratocaster and this is kind of a callback to that. This is definitely a better guitar than a lot of entry level Squires though. So I feel like this demo track needs a clean section to add some dynamics to it. Works out, cause this is a gear demo and we do need a clean section. Yeah, 
that's perfect, and that'll be a great place to throw some leads over. Clean section done. Now that that's out of the way, the most important part of any metal track, we need a breakdown. We need a build up to it as well, so. What key is this song in? The key of fourth fret. You. All right, everyone calm down. I got this. God damn it. Close enough. Don't have kids if you want to be good at guitar. And then the breakdown just hits. And we can even recycle the same picking pattern for the breakdowns. And then maybe random whammy fuckery. <laughs> That's absolute nonsense. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use it. Dude, I've been like picking the crap out of this low string. It still hasn't gone out of tune. Just sending a quick message to our uh, soon to be AI overlords. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just a big chordy section. I figure it'd be easiest for Sean if I just lay down some simple power chords and he can do like a cool lean line over it. <laughs> Much, much, much later. One eternity later. Okay, so I think we've got enough ideas. I'm going to work on this a bit off camera, add the drums and the bass, send it off to Sean, and uh, hopefully he likes it. A little longer than a few minutes later. So, uh, he didn't like it. Fuck. <laughs> Disappointing. You win some, you lose some. Damn it. I really thought I nailed the vibe on this one. I threw the rough draft into a couple of unboxing videos and some of you noticed, like, hey, is that the Sean Long demo track? Did I miss that? When's that coming out? So I was like, yes, I got it. Not to be, I'm afraid. But you know what? I like the track, so I'm gonna finish it. What I was envisioning for the last part was a melodic, anthemic outro using a shitload of the Digitech whammy. So, uh, let me come up with something. <laughs> God damn. This is actually more difficult than I thought it would be syncing up the fingerboard with what's going on with the pedal. Such a mind-bending concept, playing one note on the guitar but turning it into two notes with the pedal. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh my god, I hate this already. Something like that. Fuck you. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna practice the shit out of that off camera and I'll meet you back here for some final thoughts on the Charvel Sean Long signature but first here's how the demo track turned out <laughs>
Okay, so for not being a Les Paul, this guitar is pretty awesome. Almost as awesome as today's sponsor, DistroKid. Not my most creative segue, but it'll work. So let's take a quick second and thank DistroKid for sponsoring today's video. Now, DistroKid has been an amazing partner for the channel. And if you somehow have not heard of DistroKid before, Welcome to YouTube. We're so glad you're here. Now, DistroKid is an amazing service. I use them myself. They're hands down the best way to get your music onto all the major platforms. We're talking Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. It's super easy to upload tracks. All it takes is a few clicks. If it's a cover, they'll even help get the license, which trust me can be a complete pain in the butt if you do it yourself. So the fact that DistroKid does it automatically is very helpful to artists. In fact, that's part of why I love DistroKid. They're always actively adding features and improving the service to better serve modern artists in the digital landscape. Case in point, splits. Everyone's collaborating right now. It's an amazing part of making music and you want to make sure at the end of the day, everyone's getting their fair share. DistroKid makes it incredibly simple. In fact, Andrew Bain and I used it for our metal cover of the Fox NFL theme. The cover was so much better than the Falcon season. It was super easy to set a 50% split on upload. You can change it at any time. Please don't though, Baina. It was my top earner last year. And again, since it was a cover, DistroKid automatically got us the license. I cannot stress how nice it all is. It just makes collaboration that much easier. I love it. So if you make music, you want to get it out there, turn your hobby into a nice side hustle, or even beyond that, you should definitely be using DistroKid. Pricing starts at just 20 bucks a year for unlimited uploads. You keep all your revenue. And for you guys, if you use my link in the description, you can snag a bonus discount. DistroKid is awesome, not just the team or the customer service, but also the support on the channel. They're legit the gold standard for getting your music online and out into the world. Speaking of gold standards though, let's get back into Sean Long Charvel. And I've been delaying making this video for a while because I really wanted to do it justice. I also really wanted to get Sean Long involved. Love his playing style, love while she sleeps. You guys love cameos. And it's just been difficult to coordinate. He's been on tour, he's now in the studio. They're recording a new album, can't fucking wait. And while he couldn't be on the track, he sent some clips of him unboxing it for the first time and tracking guitar parts in the studio. I need a knife. Guys, a knife, would you? So heartwarming and it's always a huge vote of confidence when artists actually use the same guitar you can get off store shelves or from online retailers as their professional tool of choice to do their job. <laughs> Sean Long doesn't use the custom shop version. This is the guitar that he uses. Love that. And it makes sense. My personal experiences with Charvel have only been great, import or not. The Roasted Maple DK24 is still one of my favorite guitars I've ever demoed. And Satchel's signature is just, in general, one of the most ridiculously over-the-top guitars on the market that also played really, really well. So I was expecting a fun time, I was not expecting to be blown away though, which is exactly what happened. Man, it's just so fucking cool. It's sleek, it's simple, the color scheme is on brand, and it's instantly recognizable. Moreover, it's got good specs, which we'll get to in a second, but it reminds me a lot of my first guitar a black Squire Strat. And in fact, that's where a lot of the inspiration comes from. Sean Long's first guitar was also a Squire Strat that he steals the neck of. Not quite sure where the body went, but it's awesome to see him come full circle and now have a signature model with the Fender family. That's some wholesome sh And you love to see it. While She Sleeps blew my mind when Brainwash dropped back in 2014. Blew my mind again when I saw him live a few years later. In fact, it was the last show I saw for about three years while we, uh, lived through history. And originally I wanted one of these guitars because as a fan, you love to see Sean Long getting his own signature. And also I thought it looked really cool. You know, I loved the bare maple board and the yellow accents. Somehow convinced Charvel to let me try one out. Still love the way it looks. And it turns out this is one of my favorite super strats ever. <laughs> This neck, this fingerboard, 
It's so, so good. Charvel's speed profile is a thin C-ish, slim, and it's still got a bit of traditional roundness. It's not super flat on the back. Love the 12 to 16 inch compound radius Charvel uses as a standard feature across the line. Massive jumbo frets. The only aesthetic defect I could find was at the 12th fret where there's evidence of excess glue. Other than that, nothing. Even the neck pocket is a nice snug fit and the pickup routes are clean. Two areas of common aesthetic defects in import guitars, even expensive ones, but no problems here. Glow in the dark lumen lays for navigation. As I showed off in the intro, this guitar thrives in low light situations like dimly lit stages, for example. And the fingerboard edges on this thing are ridiculously rolled. I mean, with all the Fender Mexico guitars I've tried this year, this has been the theme. It's a spec that started with Fender's custom shop to make them feel more played in. It's been making its way down the lineup to the more affordable models, and they've gotten damn good at it. And out of the brands I tried this year, Made in Mexico, Fender, EVH, and Charvel, this Charvel has easily had the best rounded fingerboard edges out of the three. I know, I'm ranting about this way too much, and this isn't the only video I've mentioned these particular fingerboard edges in either, but it is pure insanity how good this guitar feels to play. So that's the worksmanship, it's really impressive. <laughs> it's kind of unique in how much efficiency is emphasized over flash. There's basically nothing here that doesn't add to the playing experience. The control scheme is just a single volume with a three-way switch, Charvel locking tuners that feel plenty solid, roller string trees, Nutmaster's tusk nut, and it's the only dual humbucker pro mod style one in Charvel's current lineup with a hardtail, and that's a pretty big deal, right? Because usually when it comes to super strats, your choices are, do you want a two-point trem, a six-screw trem, or a Floyd. Yeah, but like, what if I want none of them? So this has a dependable hardtail, none of that Floyd nonsense that plagues other super strats. I jest, obviously. But when you're not a fan of Floyds and you don't want to trim, that can really limit your super strat options. And that's a big factor that makes this guitar so awesome. Super simple, super reliable. It's not a dentist guitar. This is a workhorse. Then Sean Long is an EMG guy, which are kind of the workhorse of active pickups. Drop them in any guitar and they'll do a job. They're consistent, super easy to install with a quick connect system. Great to see EMG still getting love when so many modern metal guys are switching to fancy Fishman fluences with the complicated multi-voice wiring. Kind of weird to think of EMG as a bit of an underdog in the active pickup scene in 2022 unprecedented times. And this guitar comes with one of EMG's newer popular combos, a 57 in the bridge and a 66 in the neck. The 57 is kind of like a combination between two classics, between a hot rotted PAF and an EMG 81. Kind of, sort of, I guess. At least that's what EMG says. To be honest, I'm not fully sold on the PAF part. This is a hot ass pickup and I'm not just talking about the color. It's super high output, almost too high output. <laughs> That's really the only issue I had with this guitar, but it is kind of a big issue. The feet that they used with both the EMGs are pretty deep. They're already hitting the bottom of the cavity, so I can't lower them any further to make the output more manageable and to tighten up the sound. With the pickup so close to the strings, it has a thick, thick sound that's a lot of fun. I just wish I had the option to lower it to match my normal setup. In fairness, not everyone is gonna find this to be a problem. I just feel like it's a very avoidable issue and one that EMG should be able to solve on future runs, right? Like if this is my guitar, I wanna be able to set it up to my preferences. And the way that these pickups fit in these cavities, I just can't do that. So anyways, the 57 has got a lot of output, then steel pole pieces in an Alnico 5 magnet instead of a ceramic bar magnet to give it a rounder, warmer sound then an 81, and then it's still got the punch of an active. Like an active pickup, it also doesn't have a super huge amount of low end. It's one of those pickups that lives in the mid range, which makes it absolutely cut through in a mix. Now, 
when it comes to EMG neck pickups, the usual classic you'll find in there is an EMG 85. But to be honest, I've never been a huge fan of the 85. It's a little too round for me. And then add all the output, it can get kind of muddy sometimes. The 66 in this though is more focused. And I wonder if that's because of the steel pole pieces. <laughs> way really liked it and again I find it stands out well in a mix. All right I think I'm starting to ramble a little bit which happens when I get really excited about a guitar. So let me just say this Jim Root has recently been using this guitar live with Slipknot and that dude has his pick of the litter when it comes to guitars and he still chose to use it for a couple songs over even his own signatures and I don't blame him. For the type of player that I am this might be as close to a perfect super strat that I've played this year. This Charvel has just the right amount of visual flair and the looks reflect the experience. It's simple, it's clean, it's effective. Because look, you can put good components into any guitar. Throw some EMGs into any AliExpress Super Strat, you'll get a decent sound super easy. Smack on some locking tuners, a Graftech nut, you'll have better tuning stability. Also pretty easy. To get a neck like this with fingerboard edges and fretwork like this, that requires a professional. God, I hope that this example is truly indicative of where Charvel is at, because if so, they might be pushing the standard for import guitars, which is only good for us players. <laughs> area I took exception to was with the pickups. Not being able to lower them further into the cavities to reduce output and tighten up the hot ass pickups is pretty annoying. But other than that, I got this guitar months ago, played it so much I've broken every string, and I'm still not out of the honeymoon phase. Great workhorse that's beautiful in its simplicity. But again, I can feel it. I'm just starting to ramble, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Of course, these are just my thoughts. I'd love to know what you're thinking down below. What do you guys think of Sean Long's signature, of Charvel's in general? Have you played one recently? What did you think? If you made it this far, consider subscribing. That actually really helps out. Plus, I'll personally deliver guitar content and information to your sub feed. Maybe hit the notification bell as well, that way you know the minute a new video goes live. Massive shout out to DistroKid for sponsoring today's video, and of course, the amazing patrons that make this and every other video possible. If you want to support the channel as well and get bonus extras, link in the description. You can also join as a channel member to get custom emoticons as well as other benefits. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.